Hi, I'm Diva from Musical Hell, and I know the score. Well, it's only my second Musicals 101 installment, and I'm already switching things up a bit, because I had initially intended this segment to be about older shows rather than more recent works. But I just had to, because if by some extraordinary circumstance you have not heard of this musical yet, you really should. What's your name, man? Alexander Hamilton! If you've been following theater news at all in the past year, you know that Hamilton, Lin-Manuel Miranda's multi-ethnic rap opera about the life of America's first Treasury Secretary, has been generating buzz ever since it opened at the public theater back in February. Everybody from Michelle Obama to Weird Al Yankovic was talking about how awesome this show was. People were talking Tony Award. People were talking Pulitzer. The run at the public sold out, as have seats at the Richard Rogers where Hamilton transferred in August. And when the original cast recording dropped in September, well, the internet exploded. In fact, some of you might be getting a little weary of all the talk already. But hey, this is the part of my channel where I get to geek out about the things I like, so we're doing this. Note that there will be spoilers in this video, but as the plot developments are over 200 years old and revealed in the opening number, I consider them fair game. And me! I'm the damn fool that shot him. Yeah, consider this your incentive to go out and listen to the Spotify playlist already. So how did a bio-musical about a guy most people only know as that dude on the $10 bill make such a huge impact? The aspect of Hamilton most often brought up, its use of hip-hop in a story about colonial America, is, well, interesting, not necessarily innovative. The sound of music theater has always, to various extents, been tied to the sound of popular music, from the Tin Pan Alley days of Irving Berlin and Cole Porter to the rock modes of Hair and Rent to the power pop ballads of Andrew Lloyd Webber and Claude Michel Schoenberg. Even rap-dominant musicals aren't entirely unheard of, with the short-lived Tupac Shakur show Holler If You Hear Me and Miranda's own In the Heights. Using current music to add relevance to period settings is also an established device, in shows like Jesus Christ Superstar and Spring Awakening. Hamilton is something even rarer than all this. It's a musical that manages to be very intelligent without sacrificing its ability to speak to a wider audience. If Hamilton isn't the first music theater score written in a popular mode, it is certainly one of the best constructed. Unlike other musicals that have tried to work in a current style, Annie 2014, I am looking in your direction, Hamilton never feels artificial or overproduced. The technical effects complement the dramatic storytelling, like in Satisfied when Angelica Schuyler flashes back to her first meeting with Alexander Hamilton through a striking use of echo and reverse effects. Manuel Miranda's writing displays near Sondheim levels of character and dramatic development. The leitmotifs for each character not only define and describe them musically, but demonstrate how the characters relate to each other. Alexander Hamilton and his fellow revolutionaries speak in a swift flow, highlighting their youth, energy, and passion for their cause. One of my favorite examples is in Farmer Refuted, in which Hamilton shuts down the arguments of a British loyalist by literally talking circles around him, allowing Miranda to make brilliant use of consonants. He'd have you all unravel at the sound of screams, but the revolution's coming, they have not gonna win just at hard to listen to you with a straight face. Aaron Burr's motifs, meanwhile, are smoother and more fluid, which not only fit his opportunistic personality, but emphasize his differences with Hamilton, which contribute to their increasingly volatile relationship. And speaking of volatile differences, Thomas Jefferson is introduced with an old-fashioned boogie-woogie number, an instant contrast from Hamilton's urban sounds. This instantly sets him up as the older, more conservative Southern rival to the ambitious young New Yorker. So what did I miss? What did I miss? Virginia, my home sweet home, I want to give you a kiss. 
For further contrast, King George III's theme is written in a bouncy Herman's Hermit style, separating him not only chronologically, but geographically from the American characters. Oceans rise, empires fall, we have seen each other through it all, and when push comes to shove, I will send a fully armed battalion to remind you of my love. The use and development of the musical themes also add context to much of the story's action. Hamilton is told in a primarily narrative fashion, but it never feels like an endless parade of exposition due to the way the music adds dramatic weight and connects various elements. For example, Hamilton's soliloquy Hurricane is tied musically to Yorktown, which describes the decisive battle of the American Revolution, indicating that the story has once again entered a significant turning point. In other places, the score adds irony to the action. Say No to This, which depicts Alexander Hamilton's affair with Mariah Reynolds, is written in a sultry Marvin Gaye-esque R&B riff, which undercuts Hamilton's prayer for strength by emphasizing the temptation that he ultimately gives in to. No, show me how to say no to this side. Don't know how to say no to this. In my mind, I'm trying to go. Then her mouth is on mine, and I don't say it takes several listens to pick up on the nuances, but I think that's one of the things that has made the Hamilton cast recording so popular. It rewards you for paying attention. Miranda clearly has a lot of love for his sources and inspirations, and he shows that by sprinkling the score with allusions and references to other musicals, hip-hop, and historical events. I won't go into these because, first, Genius.com already has a comprehensive body of user-generated annotations, and second, it's really a lot more fun if you discover them for yourself. These are the kind of shout-outs that, rather than trying to call attention to their own cleverness, make you feel a little cleverer when you catch them. And then there's the simple fact that this music is unbelievably powerful. It's visceral, gripping, and very catchy. There is a distinct drive throughout the score that brings immediacy and emotional resonance to the historical events. Take Burn, Eliza Hamilton's scathing rebuke of her husband for his infidelity, which climaxes in a fierce crescendo driven by strong downbeats and insistent arpeggios that make you feel her grief and rage. You forfeit all rights to my heart, you forfeit the place in our bed, you sleep in your office instead, without me the memories of when you were. And that's perhaps the real secret of Hamilton's success. It is ultimately a universal story. The setting may be 18th century America, but the themes of ambition and tragedy, betrayal and forgiveness, and the desire to improve ourselves and know that we've left behind something of importance speak to everybody. And that universality is emphasized by the modern music and minority dominant cast. This isn't just a story of the old white guys on money. It's a story that's happening to all of us, right now. And when you strike a chord that deep, you're bound to get an enthusiastic response. I'm Diva, I know the score, and I am so in love with this musical.